I don't know whether I have another ho, ho, ho left in me. And what with it being Christmas Eve and all? Well, that's why I came to see you. I'm very confused. Wouldn't you be confused if everywhere you looked, you saw dozens of you looking back at you? Ho, ho, ho. Hey gang, Uncle Todd and Sonny here, and this week we have an odd one. It was a uh, TV special made for the UK, although it's set in New York City, starring James Coco and John Pertwee. This uh, starts out one way, and then it kind of switches trajectory in an unexpected way. Uh, we start with James Coco as a Santa and he seems very upset with another Santa that's uh, doing his thing on the sidewalk. I want to know who you are. You're standing away. Yeah, but who are you? Never mind, you're standing away. Who do you think I am? Will you move out of the way? The man's trying to take a picture. But he might. Feeling a bit upset about these imposters. Santa goes to see Dr. Merriweather, who is a psychiatrist. Santa is very concerned, because this is Christmas Eve. It's very important. But who are these people that are dressed as Santa? And if they're Santa, what does that make him? And, and then he gets on the topic of Santa school. A twinkle in your eye. We always say that all Western Santas have a twinkle in their eye. All right. Then, after a brief little diatribe about department store Santas, our Santa begins to wonder if uh, this is actionable as a copyright lawsuit. But then we start getting down to brass tacks as what all patients have to do. He starts to talk about his childhood. Well, Patara. It's on the coast. In the south of Turkey. On the coast, in the south of Turkey. Except it wasn't the south of Turkey then. Well, <laughs> a little frustrated look Pertwee gives him. <laughs> uh, even though he played one of the more serious doctors in Doctor Who, he was uh, known mostly as a comedic actor. Of course, after Doctor Who, he was known as a kick-ass actor. <laughs> anyway, uh, we get into Santa's childhood. He was a citizen of the Greek Empire at that time. And went off to become a monk. A Christian monk. And as he got older, and the area where he was was hit by a famine... He stops at a little business in this little town, and they're offering him meat. Odd. Where would they get meat? Well, we then get one of the most horrifying sequences in what is supposed to be a family film. Well, the more I thought about it, the more curious I became. And then we get the first of Nicholas's miracles. Are they going to serve the little boy up for supper? Well, what does one do in a situation like that? I prayed for a miracle. And lo and behold, I got one. After that, Nicholas prayed and raised up 
all the dead children of the village. Not all of them had parents, and so he also founded an orphanage for them. Then we move on to the three sisters. <laughs> or at least that's what the uh, psychiatrist thought. But no, they uh, were unable to provide a dowry, which was necessary at that time to be married as a woman. So, Nicholas, for three nights, he'd collected as much money as he could and threw these, one each night, into the bedrooms of one of the sisters. That was one girl saved. Did you notice where the bag of money landed? That's right, in her slipper. Meaning, this is where we get the uh, tradition that started with slippers and then went to stockings of hanging up stocking or slipper for Santa to bring us something. So now you can tell where this is uh, starting to go here. Well, eventually, as he was only human at the time, Nicholas passed on, and he was entombed. But that's not where his miracles end. You see, my tomb produces this special liquid, the manna of St. Nicholas. And if you're sick, just a drop of it will do you a power of good. Well, <clears throat> and he lay there for about uh, 700 years. Then came the Turkish invasion. But luckily, his tomb was broken into and his body, or bones rather, was taken to a safe haven in Italy. Just because they moved my bones from Turkey to Italy didn't stop me from doing the manna. Now comes the tricky part, but it's essential. Remember I told you that I'm the patron saint of sailors. Yes, they have a celebration. Big parade and then they take his effigy and or the bones and they put it on a float in the river to signify his patron saint of sailors and, you know, they pour some manna in the water. Uh, it's a celebration that still happens today. Or at least when this was made. Uh, meanwhile, at around the same time, Russia celebrated uh, St. Nicholas. He was their patron saint. And we get some interesting uh, details. The locals all lived in yurts, houses that got buried under the snow. The fire never went out. And to get in, you had to come down a ladder through the smoke hole. Well, that's how I got my reputation for climbing down the chimney. They were usually stoned out of their minds. They got high on a kind of magic mushroom. And you know what? The reindeer dug them up, and they got stoned, too. You could always spot a shaman coming because he and his reindeer were falling about all over the place. Yes, Santa is a stone shaman in Russia. <laughs> Going around giving people presents. Uh... Then we get to talk about his European tour. Then the Habsburgs come along and take me all over Europe from the Mediterranean to the Spanish Netherlands. And oh, by the way, I, I picked up an assistant on my travels, a, a little North African boy named Pete. And this leads us to Amsterdam and a parade for St. Nicholas, where we learn that this is where we get the legend of him keeping a ledger and writing down everyone who's been good and writing down everyone who's been bad. Oh, and Pete has a job himself. Pete brings a big sack to catch children who haven't been good. And in fact, there are so many of them nowadays, he's had to recruit a whole lot of assistants. Those that have been good get candy. There's one more interesting tradition. I sometimes drop small presents down the chimney, providing, of course, they left out a shoe for me to fill and some food for my horse. Every night before they go to bed, they sing me a special song. At this point, uh, the 
psychiatrist, mentions the name for Santa Claus in England, which gets an unexpected reaction. We do know that in England we call you Father Christmas. Now, all right, now you've done it. Now, I call that an insult. I am not Father Christmas. Father Christmas is quite different. I mean, that really ticked him off. What is it about Father Christmas that Santa doesn't like? around with a medieval road show. Mummers, they were called. Stand forth, King George. Stand forth. Come back and fight, you cowardly reptile. Come here. I've killed the fiery dragon dead. And just to prove it, is his head. Roast beef, plum pudding, and a glass of strong beer makes us all merry and sing. And money in our pockets is a very fine thing. So, ladies and gentlemen, stand at your ease. Come give old Father Christmas just what you to please. Yep. It's not about blessing or giving things to people. It's about doing a pulpy little show of fighting a dragon and then asking for money and food from the village. Hey, everybody's got to earn a living, I guess. Anyway, after that, uh, well, that didn't last forever because of the Puritans, and they kind of put a stop to it and pushed uh, religion back into the Christmas celebrations. And then, of course, we get the uh, exodus to the colonies, a.k.a. U.S., and uh, Santa was brought along with it. And since there were so many different cultures coming over, and they were all interacting with each other, a lot of the stuff got uh, kind of uh, mixed in together. And then a promising poet cemented all these things together. It was the night before Christmas when all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. And thus, the image of Santa as the jolly fat man is created for everyone to envision. Oh, because of this popularity, guess who made a return? A bold of daring do and courage in the stirring days of old. So please to pay attention while I finish off this flagon. And you shall hear of Brave St. George and how he slew the dragon. That, of course, leads into another thing that upsets Santa. All the people that dress as Santa to commit crimes. The Santa Claus con game, they call it. Any cheapskate can hire himself a Santa costume and set himself up on a street corner with a begging bowl. But does he give the money to orphans or charities? Chances are he spends it on cheap booze. Then you get the Santa shoplifters. They go in with the sack empty and hope to come out with it full. What if some kid sees a Santa being arrested and thinks it's me? There's a few happier moments, such as the town of Santa Claus, which happens to be where all letters to Santa are sent. But please, Santa, do not bring, put another frozen frankfurter in my stocking this year. Mary Jo. And there's the site of the first American amusement park, North Pole, New York. And now we come to the crux of the problem. Who is he? Well, he's Santa Claus. Yes, but which one? Nicholas, Nikolai, Santa Claus, Father Christmas. Your name doesn't matter. You're international. You're the bringer of gifts, the spirit of good cheer. He's all those interpretations of Santa. Oh, and as for the guys that dress up like him? And those people that dress up in Santa Claus suits. They're not imposters. They're your fans. 
you have the biggest fan club in the world. Well, having been cheered up by this, he thanks the doctor. And the doctor goes out to the office to grab his appointment book to set up another appointment. But when he gets back to his office... He's gone. But he didn't come out. Curious. Curious. How did he do that? And what's that noise outside? And thus, we come to the end of what is, in essence, uh, an enjoyable little family film about the origins of Santa Claus. Originally, I thought uh, when it started, I would be watching a uh, little comedic back and forth of, you know, like Break on 34th Street, where trying to prove he is or isn't Santa Claus. But now this turned out to be... Uh, an interesting look at history, uh, hitting the different countries, uh, the different customs, and uh, interspersed between this is a lot of uh, comedy between Pertwee and Coco. Put the feet stretch out. Oh, this, uh, very nice. I like this. Don't swing. Sorry. Right. Off we go. Where was I? No, you were a bishop. Yes. Bishop yes, Nicholas. There, there is no need to shout. It has a condenser microphone. Eye of the beholder. Take those three girls in mirror. Three, uh, three girls? They're leaning forward, Doc. Oh, I hadn't noticed. Uh, uh, what exactly? Wouldn't you like to take your coat off? Oh, no, Doc. I appreciate the warmth. I, I never got the chill of Russia out of my bones, you know? Russia? But I thought you said that Bari was in Italy. Well, it is. But I was in Russia at the same time. You, you just took that off. <laughs> they really play well off each other. Uh, James Coco makes a great Santa Claus. He doesn't uh, joke it up. He, he's very serious. He is Santa Claus. He's not acting like he's Santa Claus. He's not pretending. He is Santa Claus. And he gives the role the dignity of that. And, and not to say he's not humorous as he gives little... Uh, one-liners uh, to uh, Pertwee, you know, as they go back and forth. And Pertwee, of course, is hilarious as all of his or psychiatric tricks keep backfiring on him, like that last one with the coat where he takes it off. When Santa won't take his off, he puts it back on. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, very entertaining. Uh, it, uh, it wasn't what I was expecting, that's for sure. But uh, I did like the, the history of, uh, as uh, Coco called it, uh, a mini-biography of Santa Claus. And uh, they don't uh, lean one way or the other on the religious aspects. You know, the, the, They just quote it matter-of-factly. You can believe it or not. The, the manna from the tomb or you know all the other things that... Uh, yeah. Did he really bring children back from the dead? We don't know. That's his story. That's fine. Yeah, it's a pleasant little... Uh, I wouldn't call it a film. It's only 50 minutes long. Uh, but I think... Uh, I'm not sure if kids would enjoy it. Although they might. You know, you got the little humor back and forth. I know parents would probably enjoy it because it's, uh, it's educational. And uh, it's kind of sweet. And has a happy ending, where Santa finally accepts that, yes, he is the definitive article. <laughs> well, uh, not much else to say about this one. Uh, please hit like, share, and subscribe. And stay after the credits for my favorite scene.
Now, I'd like to get back to these three girls, if I may. I thought you might. Yes, well, I mean, after all, they're giving gold to girls in the middle of the night. Doctor, you are talking about a saint. Who? Me! Saint Nicholas! <laughs>